When I met Will Goldfarb last year, at his restaurant room for dessert, in Bali, he was clearly dying to spill the news. But, he made a good show of being all coy about it. All he would say, was that he may be. Possibly, was working on a soon-to-open project in Singapore. This, of course, was of interest to me, seeing as a he's a world-famous chef with many accolades including world's best pastry chef 2021 and his own chef's table, pastry episode. And be room for dessert was full of Singaporean diners that evening and doubtless every other evening, too, so evidently, it made perfect sense for him to open a restaurant in Singapore. Well, as it turned out, he wasn't just opening a restaurant, he was opening a circular campus and cooking club together with two other global industry heavyweights, chef Matthew Orlando of now closed a mass in Copenhagen. Renowned for his gastronomic forays into sustainability and entrepreneur Ronald Achille of Potato Hate fame. This month, Goldfarb finally welcomed me to their crazy, enormous, super fun, ambitious project. Air, located at Dempsey Hill, occupies a 40,000-square-foot space that includes a barracks complex that was once a clubhouse for civil servants, a beckoning lawn and a garden farm where edible plants are cultivated for use in the restaurant. But where in Dempsey, you ask, is this hidden glade of wonders? Well, it's behind a large car park off Holland Road, an area you have missed because you're too busy making your way to Sami's Curry or Long Beach. Back in March last year, Will sent me a message, can you be in Singapore in 48 hours? Orlando recounted. Achille had managed to secure the site. I flew in, stood on that lawn, when there was tall grass everywhere. I was 100% with my initial gut feeling. Now, with air gearing up to open on January 31st, I pinch myself. That's because it's not just a place where guests can come to dine. Air, an acronym for awareness, impact and responsibility, spans two stories, the second of which has a pastry kitchen, a research facility where Orlando has already begun fermentation experiments, and a dedicated space for cooking classes that anyone can sign up for, including plan free classes for industry professionals. In the garden, run by urban farming social enterprise City Sprouts. Fruits like chiku, vegetables like spinach, and herbs including vetiver, lemon balm, and cat's whiskers already grow. We are so lucky to be able to go and pick our own herbs. Said Orlando, adding, with excitement, I was having coffee on the lawn a month ago and saw a family of monitor lizards. Orlando sets the direction for the food, while Goldfarb is involved in the operational side. The garden and educational initiatives. It would have been hard for us to pull off what we talked about doing without a space like this, said Orlando, a former Noma chef de cuisine, who also worked at the Fat Duck and Per Se. He recalled how fermentation experiments would spill over onto kitchen workspaces back at a mass. Here, we have space to do things correctly. Not to mention, a very sizable budget. Doubtless. It's almost hard to believe you're in the center of Singapore. It's like a magical place, Goldfarb mused. I think it's one of those things that if you don't make obvious, you could take it for granted. Maybe, coming with fresh eyes, we're like, wow, this is so magical, right? It's like a playground. And, you have such an amazing clientele here when it comes to food. And people who are really passionate about different types of cuisines, and really understand the value of making things. At the same time, he's keen to stress that it isn't about two didactic American chefs parachuting in and taking over. What we wanted to focus on here was Singapore. You know, this is a Singapore restaurant. We are proud to be in Singapore, flying the flag for Singapore. 
We are not looking to transplant or bring anything from anywhere except our experience. Singapore is such an amazing, unique and diverse place. We really want to celebrate what's here and the people in everything that we do, in all of our offerings. One dish that Orlando whipped up for me to sample was a plate of crispy oyster mushrooms with a Sarawak pepper emulsion. It also has pickled chilies, which amused me when I learned that his favorite local dish is ho fun, fried rice noodles in gravy that are, of course, also served with pickled chilies. The best ho fun I've ever had is at Alexandra Village, on the back side, not even the main side he divulged. He also likes fried fish, bihun soup. He's been taken under the wing of many a passing uncle. I was not expecting that I would be walking around, this has happened about four or five times, and somebody would come up to me, they're mostly in their sixties, and say, hey, where are you from? Do you want to go get a beer? If I have the time, I always say yes. Here, Everyone has their favorite thing to eat in a specific spot and very strong opinions. And they want to take you there. As for Goldfalk, he's obsessed with salted egg, fried chicken, from New Station, bought cut tea at Zion Road, and lotus paste and grass jelly desserts. I'm also a sucker for old-school soft eggs for breakfast. I could literally just walk around and eat that all day. With Tay C. Siu Dai. Having here. The menu at air isn't categorizable into a genre. Apart from the fact that Orlando wants to keep it approachable with snacks, bites, mains, sides, and sweets, but all of the ingredients used are from within Southeast Asia. Thailand was as far as we would go for dairy, and everything else is from Indonesia. Malaysia and Singapore, Orlando said. We use a lot of produce from local Singaporean farmers as well. Which has been really interesting to learn about. So far, he's met about 30 local farmers of everything from shrimp to mushrooms. Many have also reached out, saying, we have strawberries that we can't sell because they're the wrong shape, can you help us process them, or... We can't sell these vegetables, can you turn them into a jarred pesto, so we don't have to throw them away? I wasn't expecting that to happen so fast. Local Social Enterprise Mushroom Buddies For instance, which employs people with special needs, contributes trimmed mushroom bits towards as a marmaladen, mushroom exo butter that's served with fluffy, chewy fermented cassava flatbread as well as to the oyster mushroom dish. The charm of Orlando's food is that it looks beautifully simple while demonstrating a keen mastery of complex processes. The crispy oyster mushroom dish, for instance, utilizes a spice mix made from the stems of all the herbs from the garden, which we lactoferment and grind into powder, he explained. Another of the interesting ways he uses plants from the garden is in a dish of Roselle's dark breast with cashew cream and smoked chili oil. We do a sticky glaze on the duck with the Roselle, but we also take the Roselle and put it through the same process as umeboshi, said Orlando, who had never tasted Roselle until he came to this part of the world and remains excited by it. But it's not about being clever, Everything on the menu is first of all flavor forward, he said. When I was younger, it was all about, like, provoking people. But I think as I've gotten older and also eaten more, it's about creating flavors that are unique, but still have a reference point for people. A dessert called the whole papaya, for instance, is an exploration of how fermentation processes can draw flavor even out of the parts of the papaya that aren't usually eaten. Papaya seeds are lactofermented, they're very peppery, and infused into a cream, while the papaya skin is blended with sugar syrup, frozen and scraped into a granita. Meanwhile, papaya flesh is made into jam with some ginger, 
and raw papaya is folded into it. Lactic fermented, dry papaya seeds are sprinkled on top of the dish, along with marigold oil. For me, the interesting part is how we're processing the products and the flavors, Orlando said. If I just told you this was a dish of papaya, you wouldn't know it contained the skin and seeds. Another dish that encapsulates his cooking philosophy is the one that reads, whole coral grouper for two on the menu. In people's brains, they're thinking they're going to get a whole fish on the table. But when it comes, it's four different plates. There's confit filet with vinaigrette, a rillette made from the fish head and collar, served with amping crisps, and noodles fashioned using pressure cooked and pureed fish, bones mixed with flour. Rice flour and tapioca starch, a technique we developed in 2016 at a mass totally by accident. It's the whole fish, but literally the whole fish, bones and all. One thing he's looking forward to messing around with in the research space is the pulp of the cocoa bean, not the actual bean you make chocolate out of. But the fruit. I tasted it at Will's place. For me, it tastes like the best lychee you've ever had, but on another level, another universe. It's very hard to get because it's so volatile. It's every chef's dream to have carte blanche to delve into mad scientist explorations in cooking, but at the same time, there's something very fundamental in terms of what we do. Goldfarb asserted. Our job is to feed people, and I think sometimes in restaurants, we forget that. To me, the value of being inspirational and doing exciting things really comes down to simple things like being generous. Wanting to feed people, wanting to take care of the environment. One of the things he wanted to bring to air, after 15 years in Bali, was the idea of a big village where we take care of everyone. I think something we do really well is give access and opportunity to people who might not otherwise have it. To show off their skills and to be leaders, to kind of show there's no such thing as a talent gap, but there's frequently an access gap. And leaders, at the same time, serve during the course of our afternoon at air. Goldfarb was in and out of the kitchen, quietly cleaning surfaces and supporting the team. Orlando did spill to us that Will likes to eat food off plates in the dish area, so that might have been a motivational factor. 2. One of the lessons Goldfarb has absorbed from life in Bali is to stay humble and be ready for the unpredictable, he shared. So, not to take anything for granted, to come to Singapore with open eyes and be here to learn first. And then, to communicate, as opposed to coming in and trying to teach people. We've been made to feel at home by the Singaporean community and we would like to share that feeling with everybody. Every walk through the garden, every conversation, every bite of food, that's the beautiful thing about working with all this. It's impossible not to be inspired.